think is I'm doing a little better than that. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, it's wonderful to see you. God bless you as well. Hello, hello. Hola. Hola. Hello, hello. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in, everybody. We're going to do this very quickly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Wonderful to see you. Praise God. Come on in. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera. And, uh, and we'll let the room fill up just a little bit. And then I do have a word for you. Praise God. What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord has a word for you today. It is not a common for me to do these impromptu messages anymore. The Lord has me on two other assignments. Hallelujah. Praise God. But when I hear the Holy Ghost speak so clearly and so powerfully, I have to obey. Uh, I actually uh, received a message from a very mighty man of God. I will withhold his name. If I were to say the name, some of y'all would know exactly who he is. But John and I received a message from a mighty man of God in ministry. Praise God. Uh, who, he gave me a wonderful word this morning, a beautiful confirmation. I said, man of God, I'm going to give you this word first. I am about to release it. So don't tell anybody about it. But I need to speak this over you. And I spoke it over him and his beautiful wife, his ministry, because they're about they're, they're already huge, but they're about to blow up, praise God. And when I say huge, I'm talking about the Lord using them mightily for his purposes. I'm talking about the Lord using them to make, oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about God using people who he has anointed, appointed, and set aside for such a time as this, for his purposes in the earth. This is a powerful time. It is a very important time. It's a strategic time. Somebody say strategic. Say strategic. You have to start thinking strategically. You have to start thinking strategically. You have to actually start thinking the way the enemy thinks as well. That's a dangerous territory for some. But for the people listening to me who are at that level, you know what I'm talking about. But you have to begin thinking like him so that you can swerve. Somebody say swerve. I want to go ahead and prophesy right now. Let me decree and declare in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, you're going to swerve. Anything that was appointed to come at you this week, uh-uh, you're going to swerve. It's not even going to hit you. The weapon may be forming, but it will not prosper. I said the weapon may be forming, but it will not prosper. I prophesy you're about to swerve in the name of Jesus. It will have no effect at all. The enemy is going to try to roll a curveball into your world and you're just going to swerve and come out looking and smelling and feeling fantastic, just dripping in the Holy Ghost with your anointing dripping off of you because you're going to swerve. The, the favor of the Lord is surrounding you like a shield. I feel this prophetically for at least 75 people. And these are elect people in ministry. Represent yourself, ministers of the Most High God. Tell me who you are. So uh, as my son goes back, Brandon's doing a good job, praise God. As my son goes back over the broadcast later on, if when he sees your name, I'll have him make a list. I would love to pray over your names, praise God. Uh, but represent yourself. Holy Spirit said there's at least 75 the ministers who the Lord has actually called. Praise God. Yeah, who the Lord has actually called. Because some are not called. I don't know what they're doing in ministry. You and I both know there's a couple of different approaches to ministry. There are people who really want to be significant and relevant for the Lord. There are people who really love Jesus. They know it's about the kingdom. They have laid down their own agenda in favor of taking up the agenda of the cross in favor of taking up the agenda of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They look at all the issues going on in the world. They look at all the movements and hashtags that people are starting, but they realize the only hashtag that can ever do anything for anybody is Jesus Christ. The only hashtag that can ever help anybody is hashtag salvation, hashtag redemption, hashtag Jesus. He's the answer. Nothing is really going to shift uh, permanently in the earth until Jesus Christ comes back. Oh, but when the, when, when that, when the Lord comes back, when the real Prince of Peace comes back, that is when we will see the peace of God. But for the ones who are doing ministry the right way, they know what I'm talking about. But then there are some, you know, they have other designs. Uh, we're not going to even bother about that. But I know there are at least 75 true 
ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ how funny brandon literally just texted me i saw, I saw a message from brandon come over he probably heard me say his name he said, what? I, i'm gonna have a job to do later amen well i love y'all very much when the holy spirit speaks like this i have to be obedient this is a prophetic word it's going to be an activation for some people i want to warn you up front this word won't be for everybody and if you are easily offended or um well, let's just say it like this. If you're easily offended, you, it won't be for you. And if you are easily ruffled, if your feathers get ruffled easily, this also may not be for you. But if you know that something is about to break in your life, if you know that somehow, some kind of way, something really shifted. You know, I think it was uh, last week or the week before, the Lord had me to prophesy that winds of change were blowing winds of change were blowing very often the lord will use wind and water to announce change how many know there is always a sound there is always something in the physical realm that precedes and literally announces a move of god I just broke the spell of a witch that was trying to literally uh, come over somebody in ministry on this broadcast. I don't know who you are, but there was a witch who was assigned to you. And because you are connected to me, she was trying to look at me. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that your spells, I mean, honey, you weren't even what they would call a powerful witch. Are you, I mean, Really? Somebody lied to you and told you that you could do this job. You, I mean, are you kidding me? That, I mean, what? Furthermore, let me tell you something. I'm a little mad that you just hijacked my broadcast, but I understand I have to be obedient to the Lord. You're a satanic witch. Now, let me, let me clear up two myths right now for everybody listening, and we're not going to spend much time on this, but it's very important. Otherwise, the Lord would not have shown this to me. Amen. Uh, number one, they, among the, let's say it like this, among the witch community, uh, they really believe there are different types of witches. They believe there are white witches and black witches. There's this type and there's that type. And there's the good ones and the bad ones. And the witch, which kind of witch are you? Are you the witch of the East or the witch of the West? Do you wear striped socks? Do you, do you have a broom? I mean, they believe that there are like different, and what they don't know, I'm telling you the truth. Oh, you don't have to believe me, but I promise you when you die, D-I-E, you're going to find out that the prophet of God told you the truth. They're all the same. I know that's a disappointment for some of these witches, but they are really all the same. Satan looks at all of them the same. He laughs about it. That's the first myth that we have to, to clear up. There is no division in the witchcraft community. Y'all are all, it's just witch. Okay, you're all witches. No, no difference between you or you, period, point blank. Uh, the second myth that I want to clear up very quickly is for some of you, specifically the satanic witches, the Luciferians, the Satanists, okay? Oh, the devil literally tells you, he literally tells you that you are going to get prizes and special treatment in hell. That hell is not such a bad place because when you get there, you're going to have all kinds of things waiting for you. Let me, let me reveal to you that I know exactly who you are and what he tells you. Are you ready for this? This is going to make some satanic witch, literally, you're, you're about to spill your coffee all over yourself. And that cheap little coffee shop that you're sitting in with your cheap little phone trying to watch a prophet. Okay, yeah, with your cheap little phone, I see you. Um, you're gonna spill your cheap coffee all over your little cheap jeans. But here it is. He tells you that when you get to hell, you're gonna be in orgies. Yeah, I know about that. He tells you that you'll be able to do orgies, that you will be able to part participate in the torture of former Christians who are there. Yeah, I know about that too. How do I know? The Holy Spirit tells me. Let me help you. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is superior to you and to your so-called God with a little g. My God, Yahweh, created the angel who became delusional and fell. I mean, I hate to tell you, but you're in for the shock of your life when you get there. You need to turn. Honey, listen, you need to turn. Don't get mad. You're, you're, you're literally, one of your hands is literally shaking like this. Calm down. And don't get mad. 
I know, number one, you're going to regret the tattoos. You're going to regret the tattoos, sweetheart. But I hear by the spirit of the living God that you are now remembering the Lord is calling some things to your remembrance that one of your grandmothers on your mama's side told you when you were a little girl. And you don't want to think about those things. You don't want to remember those things. But you used to sit with her on the porch at her house and she would pray with you. You need to say that prayer right now. You know that you are in the wrong thing. Some dude got you into this. Yeah, some dude got you into this. He would, oh, Lord, why do I have to know stuff about him? I'm sorry, God. I don't want to see stuff about him, but all right. So some dude got you into this, and now you, 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 you're mad at me right now. But you and I both know that later on tonight, you are, first you're going to block me. But then you're going to unblock me and come back and watch this again later tonight. So let me, t here's your word for when you come back tonight. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're out of witchcraft. I'm so glad that you came out of it. I'm so glad that you decided not to live in that darkness. God bless you. Listen, the Lord who made you, God who made you, he loves you. Can I tell you, first of all, I'm sorry about what I said about your phone. All right? I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am sorry. I have a reaction to evil. I can't help it. It's called a righteous indignation. And you won't always have that phone, but that's beside the point. I'm glad that you made the decision to come out of where you currently were. So it's not current anymore. To come out of where you were. Yeah, you can make it. Yes, you can make this change. No, it's not going to be as hard as you think. Just block everybody on Facebook, unfollow people on, on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> um, come out of the groups, those little secret groups that you're in. How do I know all this stuff? Because God is that powerful that he will tell you things. He'll, be, he'll speak to you too. I want you to pray to God, right? And yes, he will forgive you. Yes, he will. Sweetheart, listen, he knows that you just lost your way. He knows. He knows that you just, he knows about what your uncle did to you. I'm really sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. God knows what your uncle did to you. Ooh. And he knows that people, <clears throat> people look for ways to feel empowered when evil people make them feel disempowered. Are you hearing me? God understands. Yahweh, say his name. Say my name. Say, say his name. Yahweh, Jesus, the son of God. And he knows that when people feel disempowered, when somebody wicked and evil steals your innocence the way your own uncle did, God knows that when you grow up, all right, I know you don't feel like a grown up right now, but we'll get back to that in a moment. God knows when you grow up that you just look for ways to feel powerful. Honey, you just wanted to feel powerful. You wanted to feel in control. And I know that you really bought into it for a while. And I know that you got involved with that dude and all kinds of crap. And, and I know that you thought you were going to marry him. And, and yes, I know that you did some pretty twisted rituals together. But yes, it's, yes, you can undo all of that. Listen, the blood of Jesus is literally the most powerful detergent in the world. It's literally like a supernatural detergent, the blood of Jesus. And I know that Satan told you that you're his forever now and that you can never undo what you did. I see you that you cut yourself and you had to use blood and all of that. I, 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 yeah, I see. I'm a prophet of God. Let me, let, me, let me put it to you this way. The Lord loved you so much and loves you current present tense, loves you so very much that he arranged for me to talk to you. Let that sink in. Wrap your head around that. Satan lied to you. 
I know he used to literally speak to you directly in dreams. I know that. I know that he told you things that you really wanted to hear from your own dad, your own mom, and you never did. Like you're special. Like he's got good plans for you. Like he's got big plans for you. It was all 100% lies. God has plans for you. Matter of fact, hear me. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Write that down. Just go ahead. Write it down really quickly. I see you got a little pad right there on your nightstand. Write it down. That little tablet right there. Write it down. I want to tell you it's no longer your dream journal. This is going to be your Bible journal now. Go to Barnes and Noble and get yourself a Bible. I'm going to suggest that you get a new King James version. You're in, you're highly intelligent, but I want you to get the new King James, all right? Because it's going to speak your language. And I see by the Spirit of God, there's going to be a study one that's literally been, it's hardcover. Hardcover study Bible, New King James, the Lord has set it aside for you. It's waiting for you. It's going to be on sale. Like $15.98, mark my words, it'll be exactly $15.98. You can do that. God said he's going to do a miracle for you this week so that you know it, it'll, be the, it'll seal the deal. Lord, can it have something to do with her phone? Because I feel really bad about what I said about her phone. God loves you so much. I'm going to pray right now. And I want to invite you to repeat what I, what I say. Okay? Let's start to turn everything around. Let's start to turn everything around. Let's start to turn everything around. Amen. Say this. Just close your eyes and just say this. Dear Lord, I call out to you now. I call out to the God who made me. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus died and rose again. I want Jesus to be my savior. Save me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I want to change my life. Please, Jesus, make me brand new. I want to start over. I know that I can't do this by myself. But Jesus, with you, I can do it. Amen. That's true, you know. It's true, you know. You can do anything with Jesus. It's going to be an incredibly active three months for you. Get yourself, yes, get yourself to Barnes & Noble. I know you don't have a ton of gas in your car. Like, I think, um, I know, I don't, I don't think. I see that you are a server in a restaurant. And you got to wait, you know, for tips and, and all that. There's no shame in that. Praise God. I, I, was, I was a server twice um, in my life. Uh, one time, actually, not so long ago, before I got married. But here's what I want to tell you. Uh, you do have enough gas in your car. Get yourself down to Barnes & Noble. The Lord has a Bible waiting for you. And you're going to eat it up. You're going to read it. 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 You're gonna, not going to be able to put it down. Now, listen. Um, there's a trailer park near where you live. I know this is blowing your mind all the detail. Praise God. This God is, he's like that. You know, he will make sure that you know that they're talking to you. There's a trailer park that's near where you live. And some of the people burn trash in one of those trash barrels over there. And I know that's really annoying because it smells horrible sometimes. But I want you to get all your junk, all those books and all your amulets and everything and take it down there and go burn it. Mm -hmm. and and that's it and don't be afraid of Satan all right he can't come and get you he can't he can't come and get you the blood of Jesus is a powerful detergent it's going to wash you clean and I listen let me prophesy over you right now I prophesy a hedge of protection around you I prophesy a hedge of protection around your home I decree and declare that nothing that the enemy sends against you will ever be able to affect you because God has already washed you and marked you for his own write down the number two Write down the number two. Your name is either Cassie or Casey. <laughs> Write down the number two, honey. Within two years, you're going to be married to a beautiful, well, handsome, let's say handsome, a handsome man who loves the Lord, loves Jesus, and you're going to immediately have two kids really quickly. 
Um, and that will be your family. Because I know you have no one to go to. You have nowhere to go. It's probably why the Lord had me talk to you. I really get it. I don't have any family either. When I got married to my wonderful husband, we blended our families. And, and now we are family. But I get it. I feel you. I feel you, dude. But God is going to um, He's going to grow you in the next year and a half. You're going to meet this guy. It's going to be completely different. It's going to blow your mind. It'll be unlike anything you've ever experienced before. But he's, he's on point. And he's going to tell you, listen, I don't care about your past. I see who you are now. Everything about you is going to change. Girl, you're going to change your hair. Your hair changes. Everything changes. And I see that you're going to make more than one trip to that trash barrel. You're going to be burning some clothes and everything, too. <laughs> Yeah, you'll find some you'll find some new stuff. Two years. Within two years you're gonna be married. This is your start. This is your this is your your start today, your fresh start, your new beginning, your your fresh start. Well, God bless you. I gotta I gotta continue forth with what I was about to do. Um all right, I'll be praying for you, Casey or Cassie. Write to me. Let me know if it's Casey or Cassie. I know for sure it's one of the one of the two. Praise God. All right. Well, everybody, welcome to uh, this message. Amen. Uh, I didn't really anticipate that happening, to be honest. I, I just, I didn't. Uh, I came forth on today obediently with a word for you that the Lord gave me. Praise God. Uh, but how many know that when you tell the Holy Spirit to have his way, uh, and I was praying right before coming on and asking the Lord, uh, you know, to use me mightily, for, uh, for to do whatever he wanted to be done, whatever he needed to be said, uh, well, that's that's what happens. Amen. So I just want to thank you for being with me. Praise God. Thank you for bearing with me as I did that. Can we all agree that was actually a very important thing to be done? If you are here, I want to welcome you. My name is Prophet JoLynn Whitaker. I'm in full-time prophetic ministry. I am the co-founding pastor of Relevant Church. Uh, that is an online Christian community. If you don't have a church, or even if you do, please uh, uh, consider yourself former, formally, not formally, formally invited to join us. Uh, we do prayer calls every single Wednesday morning at seven o'clock Eastern time. Uh, there's a fresh word, either a prophetic word or rhema or a Bible teaching that I release on YouTube every Wednesday. And then on uh, Sunday afternoons at 4 p.m. Eastern time, uh, we do our regular uh, relevant church service. And it is always an on-time word. Because this is a prophetic ministry, sometimes the messages are prophetic. Like yesterday, for example, was a prophetic warning. It was a prophetic um alert where the Lord literally revealed some of the strategies and weapons that the enemy will be using or trying to use against us in this hour. Uh, so this is who we are in this ministry. That's enough about me. I'm really not trying to talk about myself at all. If you are curious uh, about uh, our ministry, you can just hit the link in my bio and go learn more. I'm going to ask you to please share this broadcast. I believe um, that what happened already is very powerful. Like to inspire other people, uh, but not only that, but what is to come is going to be such a major, uh, powerful shift for so many people. So if you would share, that would be amazing. Swipe right on an iPhone, swipe up on an Android. Uh, if you have one of those uh, newer phones, you got the little buttons, you can work your buttons. I thank you for the shares. Amen. Before we go any further, I want to thank all of the sweet people who sent me um, wonderful Christmas gifts gifts recently um, to the, the woman of God who sent me this beautiful scarf. Thank you. I love it. Along with this scarf, you sent me these gloves. That was amazing. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much. As you know, guys, I don't really have family. I've got my husband and my kids. So when you guys send me things, it really makes my day. Um, and then there is to the person who sent me this beautiful little, I thought it was just a clutch purse, which would have been enough by itself. But when I opened it, highlighter from Mac, my daughter tried to get it. Yeah, my, my 
my daughter said, Mom, are you going to use that? She's like, and then when she really wants something, she calls me Mommy. She's like, Mommy, will you use it? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use it back off away from my present. So, <laughs> but I want to thank you guys for sending me those things. I can't even tell you what it means to me. It means so very much. Praise God. I thank God for you. Y'all are precious to me. Amen. Let's begin and go ahead with today's message. I will not hold you very long. I promise you that. Uh, this is going to be short, but it's going to be powerful. Somebody say powerful. For many of you, it's going to actually be an activation. What do I mean by that? I mean something is going to break in the spirit when you receive this word, and suddenly you're going to see a shift, a manifestation in the natural. Praise God. Somebody say shift. Now say break, because when something breaks in the spirit, there comes a shift in the natural. When something breaks in the spirit, there comes a shift in the natural. You can't receive your shift in your in the natural. You will not see a shift in your life until something breaks in the spirit. But I came to tell somebody on today, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, that something broke in the spirit. And now, says the spirit of God, we are coming into... Oh, Oh, hallelujah. Now, says the Spirit of the Most High God, we are coming into a season, a micro season of acceleration. Say acceleration. Things are going to begin to speed up for you. You are going to accelerate. Things that would have taken you a long time before are going to go very quickly now. Relationships that were just trudging along are suddenly going to begin to move. I'm seeing many marriage proposals that are going to happen, not only in the month of February, which is traditional, but even throughout the month of March. And y'all are not going to be planning your weddings for very long either. Write to me when this happens so I can celebrate. Amen. Uh, and some of your pictures too, praise God. Uh, and there will be weddings that come about this summer due to the proposals that happen in February and March of 2018. Please hear me. February and March 2018 marriage proposals. Summer, July, uh, June, July, August 2018 weddings acceleration. It's going to accelerate. Now, uh, that's not actually the word for today, but there is going to come an acceleration. There's co coming on your business and on your career pursuits and acceleration as well. God is going to accelerate your, your pursuit. He's going to accelerate your your ability to lay hold of what has been ordained for you, praise God. I want you to write down today's date. If you are one of the people who is taking notes, if you're writing things down, write down today's date. January 29th, 2018. And right next to the date, write down the word pivotal. P-I-V-O-T-A-L. January 29th, 2018. Pivotal. God said, this is a pivotal time for many of you. It is a turning point for many of you. If we're being completely honest, and we are, many of you already knew that something was going to happen. You just didn't know what it was. You felt a shift in your atmosphere. You could have sworn something changed, and you just didn't know exactly what it was, but now you do. God said you are in a very pivotal season. What does that mean? The word pivotal means to turn. Amen. So what that means is that you are now standing in the exact place where you need to stand to receive your turnaround. Oh, you, oh my God, hear me somebody. You are now standing where you need to stand to receive your turnaround. You tried to get a turnaround in your romantic life before. It wouldn't and couldn't happen. You weren't standing in the right place. You weren't in the pivotal place. You tried to get a turnaround in your health, but you couldn't. You were not in pivotal position. You tried to get a turnaround, a breakthrough in your finances, in your career, in your ministry, in the acquisition of the funding that you need in order to go forth into the thing to which you know you are called, but it couldn't happen before. You were not in pivotal position. Oh, but now here you are standing in the place where God can pivot you so that you are headed in the right direction, so that you are able to receive what he is about to release. Some Somebody say amen to that. Praise God. It is a pivotal place, a pivotal time. Say turnaround.
When you are in a pivotal place at a pivotal time, your turnaround is accessible. Your turnaround is accessible. This is a doorway. Look at it and think of it as a doorway. I need to tell somebody, I need to tell all the people present who recently saw something end that God said, you need to look at it as an ending, but also as a beginning. Now that's cliche. We hear it all the time. I say it all the time because it's true. Every ending signifies a new beginning. But hear me, I prophesy in the mighty and matchless, the fierce and formidable, yet faithful name of Jesus, that it's not just a new beginning. Many of you are about to step into a brand new era. Somebody write it in the comments, write it down in your notes, be bold enough to speak it into your atmosphere. New era, new era. Everything is about to change. You're going to be able to look back at your life and literally see the way it's going to look to you when you look back at your life is as though there was life before this and then what you're going to go do and how you're going to live after this. Your life will be divided into two sections, says the Spirit of God. This is a pivotal time. You are in a pivotal place. God is about to bring you into a new era. And in that new era, many things are going to change. Your marital status will change. Your financial status will change. Your geographical location will change. Even what you do for money, how you earn your keep will change. Praise God. When you come into a new era, I feel as though I need to treat this with reverence. Did you hear how my voice even just lowered? I need to treat this with reverence. We are on holy ground. Just like Moses, when he approached the burning bush and God said, take off your shoes. You are on sacred ground. You must understand this pivotal place is sacred ground because it is saturated with the Holy Ghost. It is saturated with the Spirit of God, you are in a pivotal place and you now are able to step into a new era. How long will this take? I want to read you 2 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 36. Somebody put this in the comments please and I thank you for it. 2 Chronicles 29 and 36. Then Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced that God had prepared the people since the events took place so suddenly. That's you, that's you. God has been preparing you and now the events we're talking about on today are going to take place so suddenly. <laughs> so suddenly that they won't even be able to believe how quickly it happened. They won't believe it. They won't believe how much you've changed they won't believe it. They won't believe how quickly you came up. They won't believe it. They won't believe how rapidly you moved. They won't believe it. And when they ask you what you did, because how many know that, that somebody always will try to work what you have? Uh, when they see you, rather, let me say it like this. When they see you accomplish something, when they see you attain something, when they see you shift into something and they want it to, they want to know what was your formula what did you do? I want that. And the, all you need to say in return is, Jesus did it. Jesus did it. It was nothing I could have done on my own. The truth of the matter is, I tried on my own. It wasn't working. Jesus did it. God had prepared the people. God prepared you for this. And there it is. There's the pivotal statement. You allowed yourself to be prepared. You allowed yourself to experience the changes and the reformation and the shifts and, 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 and the remolding that had to take place while you were on the potter's wheel. You willingly succumbed to the desert, knowing full well that the desert was not a lifetime experience. It was a seasonal experience, but there were things that you could learn only in the desert.
There was discipline you could only develop in the desert. There was revelation you could only receive in the desert. It can't come any other place. God has to get you in that low place, in that dark place, in that pressed place. Because you know how we are. Come on, y'all. You, you know how people are. As long as things are going good, you don't want to listen. You don't want to slow down. So God, in his loving mercy, knowing full well that he can never get you to the pivotal place unless he gets you to the place where you will listen and learn, he sends you into the desert. He puts you onto the potter's wheel, and then you do learn, and then you do change, and then he does renew you, and then he does shape you. And yeah, 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 some of you, especially the ministers, I know you had to be crushed I know you had to be crushed so he could get that oil out of you. But now that has happened and you have completed that experience and you have undergone that experience and now you are ready to shift into that pivotal place. And God said it's going to happen suddenly. But note what Hezekiah and the people did. They rejoiced. They rejoiced. When you get your breakthrough, when your finances shift, when that person says, will you marry me? When they give you the key to your brand new home, when you, when you drive off the dealer lot in your new car, or whatever it is that you're believing God for. When you walk out of the doctor's office and he says, ma'am, your child is completely well. We don't even see any signs of the sickness. Sir, you, you, you are completely well. All the, text, all the tests came back negative. Whatever you are believing God for, you need to rejoice. And give God all the glory. Give God all the praise in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to rejoice. Don't forget that it is God who did it for you. Because the reality and truth is, you did try to do it on your own, but it's about to be God. Why couldn't it happen before? Again, you were not yet in that pivotal place, but now you are. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. Pop it up, please. Galatians 4 verse 4. The Bible said that God could not send his son Jesus to do his work, his work on the cross, to ransom us, to rescue us, to redeem us to the Father until the fullness of time had come. There's a fullness of time. There's a plan and a process. You've been, you've been through your process. There's a plan for your life. There's a process for your life. God has a schedule for you, honey. That's why some of these things didn't work. You're wondering why hasn't the business worked? Why aren't I married yet? Why isn't the ministry growing? Why aren't I able to get a job that, that pays me what I'm worth? The fullness of time had not come. Your development had not been completed, but I came to tell somebody that the, the fullness of time has come. You are in a pivotal place, and now you're about to accelerate. A new era shall be birthed, says the Lord. A new era shall be birthed says the Lord. A new era shall be birthed, says the Lord. You will look at the timeline of your life and you will be able to divide it into two halves. There was then and now there's this. There was then and now there's this. Praise God. God said that era, the prior era, the previous era is ending. And a huge new door is swinging open. I told the man of God uh, who I had the privilege of, of um, communicating with on today, on this morning, that I said, man of God, I wish I could describe this door to you. Uh, when the Lord gives me heavenly visitations or visions, it always blows my mind because heaven is completely unlike anything we have on earth. Um, things we build on earth are... are pale comparisons to the way they do it in heaven. But the Lord allowed me, I wish I could have seen more of it, but the Lord allowed me to get a glimpse of a vault that is in heaven. Say vault. I promise you it's a vault. And in the vault, whew, hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the vault, are shelves upon shelves upon shelves, and on the shelves are scrolls that are rolled up, scrolls. And on the scrolls is the timeline of people's lives, the schedule for people's lives, what the Lord has ordained for you, hallelujah. What God has scheduled for you, what the schedule is, uh, what, 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 what the, what the, 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 the layout, the landscape, the schedule. It's like that. 
Some of you are getting ready to be able to access what is written next for you on your schedule. And of course, there will be some people who don't, who don't. Of course, there are going to be some people who will not access what comes next on the schedule. Why not? They're bitter. They're angry. They're disobedient. They're rebellious. They're not consecrated. You know, Joshua said, consecrate yourselves for, the, for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things. If you want God to do amazing things, you need to be consecrated. If you want to access the timeless blessings of the Lord, you need to be consecrated. Praise God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm not talking about mercy. I'm not talking about grace. I'm not talking about salvation. Those things are accessible to anyone, anytime. But if you want the blessings of God, if you want the destiny that God has uh, written on your scroll for you, you need to be in position. You need to be consecrated. You got to be ready to go, baby. So some, don't be mad. As a matter of fact, let this motivate you. Just, just, just commit to yourself and to Jesus right now that this will be the time where you get yourself ready so that in the season to come, you can access what comes next for you on the schedule the Lord wrote on your scroll. But for the ones who are in position, hear me somebody. For the ones who are in position, for the ones who are ready, you are consecrated, you have prayed, you have fasted, you've been loyal. No, you're not perfect. Yeah, you made mistakes, but you repent quickly. You repent quickly, you will be able to access what is written next, uh, oh God, on your scroll for your life. And you are about to shift into a brand new era. I hear the voice of the Lord telling me that things he showed you seven and eight years ago, and that is the number. That's the number. Seven and eight. Not five, not six, not nine. No. Don't negotiate with this. You can't. Some things we cannot negotiate with. The Lord said, because he's very strategic and timely and precise with his timelines. He said things that he showed you seven and eight years ago. You may be wondering what you, you, maybe you have been saying to yourself or even crying out to God and saying, but God, why has that not come to pass? I know what you showed me. I know what you told me. It's been seven years now, God. It's been eight years now, God. The Lord said, no, he showed you back then. He gave you a little taste. He gave you a little whiff. You caught a whiff of it on the air. You caught a glimpse of the vision. He put it in your spirit to keep you hungry. Oh God, hear me. He put it in your spirit to keep you hungry. But now in the new era, you're going to experience the manifestation of things that he showed you seven and eight years ago. I, I want you to look back. Close your eyes very quickly because we're almost done. Close your eyes really quickly and think back to something God told you seven or eight years ago. Something you knew seven or eight years ago. A marriage he gave you a glimpse of. A, a house, a home, where you would live, how you would live, he gave you a glimpse of. A ministry, a, 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 a vision, a passion, a, a business, a, a, a movement, a, a project, a brand, he gave you a glimpse of seven or eight years ago. Somebody said right now, well, why isn't she talking about salvation? Listen to me. I, I, I got to arrest your religious spirit right now. That right there is why you're not advancing the way you want to. You're listening to a prophet because you want to advance. Of course, we're talking about salvation. Nothing I'm talking about here will be, will be able to be accessed if they're not saved. That's a given to the people I'm talking to. I'm prophesying about destiny. I'm prophesying about your future. I'm prophesying about your purpose. Do you understand that every single person was made with a purpose? That's you too. You have a call of God on your life, man of God. You have a call of God on your life. But please stop judging people. I'm, I'm thanking God right now that you're here. But listen, God's going to work on your heart. He's going to give you a new heart. He's going to cleanse you. You have a call of God on your life. Amen. But that religious spirit will block you and hinder you. And I know that you're analytical. That's all right. You're analytical because you're supposed to be an apologist. Look it up. That's where you belong. Oh, you're going to be like a fish in water. You're going to be like a fish in water, man of God. Look up Ravi Zacharias. Register for his next training, okay? You're going to have to submit a video of yourself 
arguing a point in the Bible because this is no joke. You, you told the Lord you want next level. I'm giving it to you. Take it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Get, get in, get in your bathroom where you like to practice. Get in your bathroom because I know that's where you like to practice to preach. Now you know I really see you. Get in your bath, bathroom where you practice and pick a point in the Bible because you, you're going to have to submit a video of yourself. How do I know? My husband and I went through a mentorship with him. All right. And that's what you need to do as well. Praise God. All right. So that's, that's, that's a word for you. Going into a brand new era. I speak against delays in the name of Jesus. I speak against counterfeits in the name of Jesus. I arrest every foul spirit that would dare to interrupt what God is doing in your life. I speak increase over you. I speak acceleration over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that this is a pivotal time for you. This is a season of acceleration for you. And no man can stop what God is about to do. They can't stop what God is about to do in your life. The devil can't stop what God is about to do in your life. I loose blessings over you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy increase in your finances in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare excellent health and long life over you in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I prophesy that this is your time. This is a period of acceleration for you. You are stepping into a new era and it shall be so. It shall not be otherwise. It shall be so. It shall not be otherwise. Say it. It shall be so. It shall not be otherwise. Amen and amen. Well, this is your last chance to share. If you haven't done so, I would appreciate if you do. I'm not promoting me. Not going to do it. Uh, I'm not I'm not really even allowed to do that. Uh, I am sold out to Jesus, and that is what we do here. Uh, my will is to do the will of my Father. My joy is the joy of the Lord, but it is also... My joy is also when I get your praise reports. And speaking of which, let me leave you with this. Uh, the next time you see me will be for a praise report. report. All right. I'm going to do um, a live, a very short live video just on praise reports. Things that happened to people uh, under our ministry just last week. Amazing things. I need to share some of this with you so that you can be encouraged because I decree and declare that you are next. After that, we will get together on the Wednesday morning prayer call. It's a prophetic prayer call. Uh, very similar to the prophetic words that the Lord gave me today. Sometimes I receive words for people on the call. Praise God. You can watch on Periscope or call in on the phone line. On that note, I love you very much. I'm praying for you always. If you need prayer, feel free to write to us. Uh, we do pray for everyone who asks for prayer. I love you all with the love of Jesus. I will see you on social media. God bless you.